A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive part 70. Painting the cab reinforcement strips for around the edge of the footplate and fitting them in place after repainting the footplate. Because the original coat of paint on the footplate had sustained some damage. This clip was shown, I think, in the previous episode. I was in the outer part of the workshop painting the footplate supports that I made. I'm using etching primer that I buy from a company called Auto Paint Northern, which really is good stuff, but you do need to leave it for 24 hours before you overcoat. It's not particularly warm in the outer part of the workshop, not freezing, but definitely not warm. And for that reason, I left the paint to dry for over 24 hours. But I have not been idle. I decided it was a good idea while the paint was drying in the outer part of the workshop to rub down the footplate in the warmer inner part of the workshop using some wet or dry sandpaper. I use the sandpaper wet because it cuts better and here I'm evaporating the water using my small blowtorch, being careful not to overheat the existing paint. In this clip I'm applying the top coat of paint to the cab support rails. And as before, I left the paint to dry overnight. Unfortunately though, this stuff is enamel paint and it's not quite as dry as I would like it to be. This enamel paint that I'm using is HMG gloss black and because of the temperature in the outer part of the workshop, it's actually dried a bit dull. This doesn't matter because once this coat of paint has dried and I mount the rails, I will be repainting the tops of the rails just to make sure everything is really waterproof. I'm even going to paint the underside of the footplate, but I'll be using a brush for that. The footplate of a miniature steam locomotive is quite a hostile place. It gets covered in hot ash, often all mixed with oil and water. That's why I'm going a little bit over the top with the paintwork in this area. I'm not using masking tape, I'm using a piece of cardboard. And in some areas, as you can see, I'm not even using the piece of cardboard. I'm spraying just the right amount of paint from the aerosol can, so it doesn't go everywhere. For all the painter files out there, here is a gratuitous shot of the paint drying on the footplate. And yes, you guessed it, another 24 hours later, I'm back in the workshop and I'm about to fit the cab supports. First of all, I'm going to fit the long piece that fits across the front of the cab. I'm pleased to say that every one of the countersunk holes is deeper than I need it to be and that none of the countersunk bolts that I'm using will stick up above the support rails. Just to confirm that everything fits, once the support rails are bolted to the footplate, I insert bolts into the holes through which the bolts that hold the cab to the footplate will be used. All of the bolts are going to be 2BA and the bolts that hold the cab to the support rails are going to be longer than the rest. Here's a shot of the 2BA spanner that I'm using. I don't really need to say much more about this, you can clearly see what I'm doing. This short piece supports the cab at the front. I had to modify it to allow the reach rod to move the valve gear. You may notice there are many holes in this footplate, and this is really not my doing. I really get the feeling that the original builder of this locomotive started off with great intentions, but as the job went on, it got more and more difficult, and a lot of the parts that I'm currently working with, like the cab and the saddle tank, are quite large, cumbersome and heavy. From my point of view, this job is now reaching its inevitable conclusion. I really don't have the facility to paint the cab or the tank because the weather outside is terrible and inside the workshop is just not big enough. I will be test fitting the cab and the tank, but once I know that all the parts fit, I will take them off again and that is how the owner will pick up the engine. This is the left hand side cab support rail and as you can see it's only held with two countersunk 2BA bolts when the cab is fitted, there will be a few more 2BA bolts going all the way through, which should make this entire structure very rigid. This is a job I just had to do. Fitting the cab to this very weak, springy footplate would not have been a good idea at all. And now, as I fit the nuts to the bolts 
and tighten them in place so I can feel that the entire assembly is a lot stronger. I see a bit of paint over spray on the injector pipe, but this will just wipe off with some cellulose thinners. No problems there. I'd like to diversify for a moment to show how easily things can go wrong. Owing to a change of medication for my type 2 diabetes, I soon realised that there was a bit of a problem. It was affecting my brain in an adverse way. Here's just one example. The last job I did on the support rails before I painted them was to countersink the holes for the countersunk bolts. And here, as you can see, the countersink is back in the box of countersinks. The problem was, though, I used a very small hole cutter to enlarge the holes in the footplate because some of them were not 100% in the right position. I looked everywhere for this hole cutter, and then I realised it was in the drill chuck. And I don't remember putting it in there, and for what reason. Luckily, I don't have to take much medication. I take something called dapagliflozin, and that is just one 10 milligram tablet each day. Personally, I cannot recommend metformin or something called citagliptin. Both of these chemicals make my brain go very wrong. I'm back on the trusty dapagliflozin now. It makes me go to the toilet fairly frequently, but I can live with that. What has this got to do with steam engines? Nothing whatsoever. It's just that a lot of my viewers are round about my age group. And I'd just like to share some of my weird experiences with my viewers. This job is really starting to take shape now. It's taken a long time. I've lost count of the hours. As it's December the 31st, 2023, I would like to wish every one of my viewers a very happy new year. Live long and prosper. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.